Hello again, ladies. Another aspect of the Jesuits and what they control deals with fluoridation. You think, how many different types of fluoridation are there? Four, in actuality. I didn't know that till recently when the Lord showed me the truth about it. But let's just see how fluoridation and the Jesuits continues. How extensive it goes. So we're going back to Jesuit.org. And we're going to click on Jesuits Worldwide. That's weird. And, uh, okay, Jesuits Worldwide. If you clicked on that, you'll see this home page again. And then you'll scroll down to the bottom here, like I did, and click on links. And then on their links webpage, you'll scroll down to the World Health Organization link. Click that. And, and again, you see the same stuff as before on their main home page. So we're going to click on the Programs button. And you're going to click on Oral Health. And then we're going to Documents and Publications. And we're going to click on the full text link right here underneath the title Milk Fluoridation for the Prevention of Dental Caries. You say, what does, what do milk and fluoride have to do with each other? Well, nothing unless you're the Vatican and the Jesuits who want to dumb down the population of the world through fluoridating milk, all under the name of Prevention of Dental Caries. Yay! Uh-huh. Yeah, right. So, we're going to scroll down to the page 8 in Roman numerals. Oh, and before we do that, check out these little titles in this article here. Almost 200 pages of information. Milk and dental health. Hmm. Interesting. Milk intolerance. Milk intolerance, if you don't know this already, comes from pasteurized milk. And they talk about the clinical studies across the world that they've done, and basic science studies. Hmm, interesting title there. Chemistry of fluoride in milk. Absorption, metabolism, excretion. Effects of fluoride from milk on intraoral systems and the biological plausibility of it all. Mm -hmm. Right. Then they have the addition of fluoride in milk and all the different things of manufacture of it via sodium fluoride, disodium monofluorophosphate via powdered fluoridated milk, implementation of quote unquote community based programs across the world. And all the pages you can review on your own time about that evaluating fluoride exposure and milk fluoridation programs. Again, all their little statements and propaganda about that. And of course, the good old program evaluation, or what's otherwise known as after action review in military industrial security complex terms, which that right there has connections to this too, because the Jesuits are the military arm of the Vatican as you've heard before. So we're going to scroll down to this page right here and it says dental caries and oral health is the most prevalent oral disease in several Asian and Latin American countries and how it and the last sentence on this page and the first sentence here actually tie in together quite well. Although for the moment it appears to be less common and less severe in several low-income countries, the WHO reports 
anticipate that in light of changing living conditions and dietary habits because of industrialization, the incidence of dental caries will increase, particularly as a result of growing consumption of sugars and inadequate exposure to fluorides. Well, eating sugar, yes, I agree, that is true that that leads to cavities, but fluoride is not what it's cracked up to be. I have literally lived through that scam my entire life. And, but yet they say in Jesuitical sophistry, otherwise known as doublespeak, they say, quote, it must be acknowledged that a lack of fluoride does not cause dental caries. But wait a second, they just said, you know, the incidence of dental caries will increase because of inadequate exposure to fluorides. Hmm, isn't that strange? You say, there's no connection here. I've already shown you how to get from the Jesuits organization website, their own word of mouth resources, their own materials, to this article here that we're looking at. So you cannot claim, you know, unless of course you're violating the King James Bible passage about judging a matter before you heareth it. Uh, might want to look that, that verse up in case you don't believe what I'm telling you here. This is their own article. As we can see, WHO. Right there. Now let's look at page 9 in Little Roman Numerals. And the first two paragraphs on this page are quite interesting. Research on the oral effects health effects of fluoride started around a hundred years ago. Interesting how that occurred within a couple of decades after the first perversion Bible was introduced to the world. Isn't that something? How when Bible perversions are introduced to society across the world, you know, like Psalms chapter 9 verse 17 says, the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. You know, man says God's perfect word, the King James Bible, is not good enough. So I'm going to translate it into a dumbed down form under man's standards. Isn't it funny how something like this occurs from such a satanic sin as Bible perversions from the Vatican? And it just happened to start around 100 years ago? from the time of this report being made recently. But there's no connection there, right? So you say, well, how about here? Milk fluoridation as an alternative vehicle for automatic population directed administration of fluoride began in Switzerland some 50 years ago. Again, if you look at the Bible perversion history, you know, anything other than the King James Bible that has ever been created all the perversions, you could probably figure out which one ties back to 50 years ago, according to this article's dating history. You know, and what they say, this population-directed fluoride administration began in Switzerland. You can probably figure out what Bible perversion was created that led to this being implemented 50 years ago. And then if we scroll down to page 12, And here they talk about the, the different composition of milk and the different types of milk throughout the world and the changes throughout history of how milk is received by various people across the world. We see on page 12 under milk and dental health in the introduction and the review of evidence between supposedly milk and dental caries. They say that um, this Sprossen person concluded that milk improved oral health. Milk in its pure, raw, unadulterated, unpasteurized form, yes, does improve oral health. But they say that the strength of the evidence for a quote-unquote decreased risk of dental caries for milk was classified as possible. But then in their Jesuit sophistry doublespeak propaganda here, 
they say down here in this paragraph that in conclusion, thus it is possible that milk could be caries promoting due to the lactose content, caries preventing, or somewhere between the, these two. So they say that on one hand, yes, this person, this scientist supposedly says that milk improves oral health, but then down here they say, well, it could be caries causing. The only thing that causes dental problems caries, so to speak, or cavities, in other words, is your diet. If you're eating a lot of sugar, a lot of processed food and junk food and soda or pop, whatever you want to call it, and fluoride will indubitably give you very poor dental health. But the rest of this article talks about all kinds of different things the chemistry of fluoride in the milk and everything that we saw earlier. And you can look at this at your own time. But again, if there was no connection between the Vatican Jesuits and milk fluoridation, the third type of fluoridation available now in this world, because nations reject the Lord Jesus Christ and think that their self-righteous church attendance membership is going to get them to heaven. They reject the Lord Jesus Christ and his free gift of salvation. And as a result, he says, okay, I'm going to make your life absolutely miserable on this earth. And one of the ways I'm going to let Satan do it is through milk fluoridation, all in the name of Preventing dental caries. <laughs>